what we'll be doing uh, as our usual process today is I'll be handing over to Gareth, our product lead, who'll go through a presentation and an overview, and there'll be an opportunity to ask any questions or share any thoughts throughout the presentation. I'm just going to pop everyone on mute. And great, it looks like we've pretty much got everyone. So it looks like it'll be around about an hour session today. We'll see how things go. If we've got lots of questions, then we can run over and I will hand over to Gareth now. It's come off mute, uh, thanks Ross. Uh, yes, uh, thank you much for all your time today. Um, so uh, my name is Gareth Friedman and I'm the Connections and Capital Manager at Electricity Northwest. Uh, work, yeah, work, uh, and I work in the Strategic Planning Department. And uh, I'm here just to talk about the, um, the work undertaken by Workstream 1B, Pog 5, and our proposals for the Network Development Plan Form Statement. So what I'll do just before I start is I'm just going to share my screen. Um, just two seconds there. So can everyone see that okay? That's great. So um, so yeah, I'll look to present for about 35 to 40 minutes and after this open the discussion and gather as much feedback as possible um, as today's discussion could have impact on our direction of travel. Um, so I'll kick this off by firstly, I would like to provide a bit of history and the context as to how we developed our form statement. Now, back in February 2020, Product 5 launched with the objective to improve DNO's signposted network capacity shortfalls and forecast network requirements with a specific intent as to how they, we publicised uh, this to the wider market. To achieve this, Product 5 reviewed what DNOs currently produce, and it was found that there are two main reports we publish uh, at the moment. The first one is our Long Term Development Statement, or LTDS. And this provides information on our existing network and the availability of capacity in the short term. The second one is our distribution future um, energy scenarios, which is our DFES document. And this provides long term forecasts of future energy pathways to 2050 in order to capture the envelope of uncertainties as our network develops, as our network develops towards net zero. We found that this left a gap in information on our network development in the medium term. So it was originally proposed that a standard network capacity report would address this and help industry stakeholders by providing insights into future network headroom in the medium term. And this would enable connections to locate in the most advantageous areas, identify when and where issues occur and develop targeted mitigations. Now, while this was being developed, Bayes issued a draft license condition in August 2020 for the GB implementation of the EU Green Energy Package. Now, this required DNOs to produce a network development plan, uh, which would include a DNOs plan for reinforcement, the use of flexibility services, and also a network capacity report within the five to 10 year uh, window. This new network development plan had to be published by May 2022. So once this was published, uh, P5 took stock of uh, the changes and the implications of the new license condition and realized that there were synergies between the network development plan that had just been published and the network capacity report that we'd been talking about. And it was agreed to work in parallel and develop the form statement for the network development plan. And also to continue to develop and publish the network capacity report by August 2021, taking feedback from this experience and learning um, to integrate into the capacity report side of the network development plan. So this brings us to August 2021. And at present, DNOs have published their respective network capacity reports, which are now called network headroom reports. Slight name change, but the same principle. And we are all currently taking feedback on these and we'll feed this um, back to the P5 working group. P5 have also published um, our proposals for the network development plans form statement, which is now on the ENA website. And we aim to produce a report on the network development plan form statement by December 2021. And this puts us all in a good position to achieve the Network Development Plan publishing deadline of May 2022. 
So the license condition, SLC 25B, uh, which relates to the publication of a network development plan, is broken into several parts, as shown in the slide. Parts A to C um, define the necessary scope and content of the network development plan. And parts E to H relate to the processes for consultation, publication and submission of the plan. Uh, the high level points which describe the scope of the network development plan are each DNO uh, has over 100,000 customers has to produce a plan for May 2022 and every two years thereafter. They need to cover the five to 10 year ahead period, which follows on from the LTDS or the long term development statement that covers um, years 0 to 5. They need to report the network development requirements for new generation and load and highlight areas suitable for new connections and flexibility services using a best view uh, of development covering all voltages down to 11 kV inclusive or HV inclusive. And it needs to include a methodology document to inform the user of underlying data and assumptions. So looking at the form of statement, it has been broken into three distinct parts, namely the network capacity reporting or headroom reporting. Now this looks at your connections, the flexible services and the reinforcement. Network development reporting, and this gives an indication of new infrastructure and flexibility services. And the network methodology reporting. So effectively how we how, how this is made and what are our assumptions in making this document. And I will now talk through each part individually. So the main objective of the network capacity report within the network development plan is to indicate where it is anticipated that there will be network capacity to accommodate future connections and where further capacity may be necessary and where flexible services may be required. Now on this slide, we have a table detailing the scope of the network headroom report with each um, deliverable detailed. The main differences from our proposed form of statement is that headroom reporting will include every year from 1 to 10, which is over and above the 5 to 10 year requirement, as we feel keeping it on one coherent document is desirable for users. And our stretch on this is to include data after the 10th year, taken in five year increments up to 2050. And this will help align the the network, or network development plan with the DFES. Our scenarios include the four DFES scenarios plus a best view where different. So um, for our network capabilities and assessment methodology, we will provide demand and generation capabilities in terms of spare margin in megawatts per year per scenario. And it will reflect approved network developments in delivery, including asset base enhancements. And the information uh, will be considered of thermal loading and fall level constraints as a minimum. The coverage, the coverage um, information to be provided for all BSP and primary substations down to including primary secondary voltage, namely HV, so your 11 kV and your 66. The format and publication uh, will be tabular in nature with the respective DNOs to add interactivity to the workbook if required. A short guidance document shall be included to explain the scope of the data workbook, define each data element and give user instructions. Now, our annual update. Now, I've highlighted everything on this uh, thing that's highlighted green is a stretch target, and I wanted to highlight the annual update because the actual network development plan is subject to be um, uh, reported every two years. But the capacity side, we felt the, the best thing to do and to align with the LTDS and DFES, which come out annually, is to bring up the capacity report um, or header report yearly as well. So that's beyond the scope of the actual network development plan itself. But we felt it was important to allow for continuity for customers. Now I'll just like to talk through our network development reporting. So the next part of the network development plan will focus on network development reporting and will serve to provide the user with valuable additional information on key projects set for delivery in terms of new infrastructure to be installed and upcoming flexibility services to be employed. The information is provided with the objective of providing users with foresight whether network plans may impact on theirs and signpost requirements for flexibility services so users can target developments. The high level plans for network interventions and flexible services will cover for the years one to 10 um, location of the intervention down to the HV bars, 
and development requirements for flexibility services and new infrastructure. And that's covered in the table below. I'll just go through that. So it goes through your flexibility services, and highlights the magnitude required, the year of intervention and likely duration, and the number of years into the future, and the nature of the requirement flexibility product required. And the new infrastructure, we'll look at the timing and high level scope of the intervention, the construction duration from start to finish, the details of connectivity um, and linked to the LCDS, and the asset qualities, um, you know, circuit lengths, number of transformers, and also it'll provide information on the equipment ratings. It'll also provide a justification for the need of network developments and where it resides on the delivery life cycle. So whether it's just been signposted, whether it's in an approved plan, or whether it's in delivery. And in accordance with the new license condition, the network development plan must provide transparency on how it provided its outcomes. Each DNO must produce a methodology document to cover the intern process and provide sufficient detail to allow stakeholders understand sensitivities and extrapolate network development plan results. I, 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 yeah. So network assessments and planning practices shall be explained in sufficient detail to assist users understand development plans by undertaking their own evaluations of the detailed information within the NDP or network development plan. It is proposed that the scope of the methodology report shall accompany um, the network development plan includes the description of the end to end process shown in the slide. The assumptions, for example, those on the, those on the export uh, from existing and accepted generation connections. References to published data and network parameters. Um, it, it, information on the DFES and the best few forecast methodologies and how we came to those conclusions. Uh, network analysis and assessment methodologies and also standard network design and operation of all voltage levels and the nature of alternative network interventions, including uh, typical equipment ratings. In the methodology reporting, it should give a breakdown of how we forecasted um, uh, the information we're looking at, the network impact assessments of each um, uh, product or, or each um, intervention we're looking at, the optioneering employed and how we came to that, and also um, a best view of development plan giving actual information or giving information on how, how we came to that conclusion and what the best view of development plan actually looks like now we came to that. So um, other sections of the report or how we came to our former statement is the governance. Um, governance of the NDP um, is required to ensure consistency in future DNO reports. Um, and what we found is the end of the network development plan is actually, you know, it's a brand new report and it's going to be fast moving and it'll be. What we want to make sure is that any customer requirements or any customer feedback or stakeholder feedback is brought back in and we actually give value addition so we can have fast updates to it and make sure that it's providing the best value um, for our, our stakeholders. So we're looking at potentially governance to the ANA and allow for agile updates whilst involving all DNOs to a working group. And consideration should be given to defining the network development plan form a statement in an engineering recommendation. Uh, including it um, under the governance of the distribution code uh, review panel by listing it as an annex or instead making it an EA guidance document, which continues to be owned and kept uh, under review as an open networks project product. We feel this is the best way as we get to terms of how this report is going to look and feel is the best way to actually govern it. Um, and then looking uh, to the forward, it is recommended that reporting of network capacity at interface points is, is, um, is reviewed to provide consistency between DNOs and uh, national grid to increase stakeholder utility by improving how distribution and transmission reports work together. And also a review of the synergies between the network development plan and the LTDS review to see if there are any parts of the reports which can be amalgamated to avoid this uh, duplication. What I mean by that is the, the LCDS is actually up for review at the moment and it's currently being reviewed under um, one of the Workstream products. So it's just looking at that and how it will fit in with the network development plan. Next steps. So I brought of the, the give a brief overview of the history of how we've come to where we are with the form statement. And at the moment, we've all publicised our network capacity reports. Um, We've done that now and we're now in the stakeholder engagement stage. So what we're hoping to do is we've publicised all our 
and um, requested reports. We're looking for feedback from all our stakeholders, um, internal, external, make sure we feed that back into the actual P5 working group. And we incorporated it into then finalize the, the form of statement, which is um, due for report, due for completion in December 2021. And um, yeah, once that's the case, then we should be in a position to produce that by December. So with that, I will now give a live demonstration of the network heading report just to give you a feel of how it works and um, what we're trying to achieve with that. So we have, oh yes, uh, Emily. Gareth, I was just going to jump in before we move on. David yeah. Phillips asked a question a little bit earlier. I think you've pretty much touched on it, but just in case you wanted to add any more detail, he's asked, you mentioned draft capacity reports. Can we still feed back on the draft of these? And yes. timelines. Yes, um, well, I think we're at the moment while well, we're feeding back into the P5 working group, I think we have another two weeks to feed back on that. So we have publicised um, what we think the form of statement should look like on the ENA website, uh, which is everyone's more than welcome to have a review of feedback. And we also have the capacity reports, which you can feed back to individual DNOs. And each DNO has a representative on the, the this uh, working group. So yeah, any feedback on that would be greatly appreciated and um, we can always feed that back into the form of statement before December 2021. So was there any more questions? That was it. Hopefully that answered your question, David. And great, we can carry on. Yeah, it did. It did. Thank you. I just wanted to say um, I've, I've seen the form of statement, but I wasn't sure where to look for the reports. That's no problem. Um, so what we have here is the data workbook, and I've, I've used the Electricity Northwest one, um, obviously, but uh, it, it's the easiest one that I can navigate through because myself and my team created it. So the way it's structured is we have two tables that are interactive and two that just give um, the hard data. So I'll just go through this. This one um, gives your demand headroom summary. So this is a summary table of the, the hard data that we have here. So what you can do here is you can put in the primary substation that you're looking for and it'll give you um, against the four the five scenarios that we have. So we have the, the four DFS scenarios and our SV scenario and it gives indication of um, your firm and your non-firm capacities um, and you have your 2021 up to 2030 and then after that it's every five years and you can do that for primary and BSP. You do the same for your generation headroom summary tables. So then you can look at uh, primary substation and your technology. And then that'll give you your non firm um, headroom up to 2050 as well. Uh, then we have the hard data, which goes through. If you just scroll sideways, it gives the, the five scenarios that we're looking at. You can also click on these links here and then look at the primary substation and it'll give you an indication of the, the headroom. And you have for demand, you have your firm headroom and your non-firm headroom. Again, that goes from 21 to 30, and then from 2030 in five-year increments up to 2050. And um, we have the primary BSP headroom as well, and then your generation primary headroom. So what this does is it gives you the amount you can connect on with a particular type of technology at that primary. So if you were to connect on inverter-based generation, you could get at Albion Street, you get uh, 31 megawatts. Um, if you were to connect on at the lower levels, synchronous um, generation, you would get 14 and a half megawatts. And then if you're to do HV, so connect onto the primary substation, you get 10.6. And battery headroom would be 14.7. So that gives a good, but this is them in total. So you can get, a maximum of 14.7 megawatts of battery generation onto this um, primary substation, or you could do a combination of these technologies. And you can do the same for them for BSP. So that's just an indication of that. And we also have a, a document alongside it, it's about 16 pages, and it just explains what the um, capacity per headroom report is, what we're trying to achieve with it, and it also gives. Um, uh, it also signposts at the end where you can get in contact with us and feedback, which is something we're always uh, looking to achieve or to receive. 
So um, with that, um, I've gone through my demonstration, gone through the main presentation. I'd just like to kind of open up to a bit of a Q&A session. Um, but just before I do that and open up open ended, we have a few questions that we um, are looking for feedback on as well. So I believe that this presentation will be sent out afterwards and it mightn't be because these questions are you cold, you might not have an immediate answer. But like as you've given the time to um, listen to me today, um, if you can just have a think of these questions and anything that hits you while you're, um, you know, uh, at home this this week and you think you can feedback on, the, on that or ask a bit more of a question on it, I'm happy to go in through. So we've broken the questions down by the headroom report, the development plan and also the methodology and a general one. So for the headroom report, just like to ask a few questions on this. Um, is there any value in, in the reporting of network capacity up to 2050? Are there advantages in reporting network capacity for multiple scenarios? So the, the four DFS scenarios plus the best view if required. Is it useful to update the headroom report annually in accordance with the DFS? Is there enough clarity and awareness of how the various capacity reporting um, work together? And what are your views on the Excel format and the future implementation of SIM? And that's one that I'd be quite keen to understand as well. Because when we were talking about it, we thought Excel was the best format because everyone ha has Excel and everyone can use it. But if anyone has any other ideas of a better format for displaying this information, I'll be um, very interested to hear that. For the network development plan, does the proposed reporting of larger scale interventions meet your requirements for long term visibility of network and development planning? Is it clear how this part of the NDP fits with the embedded capacity register, you know, LTDS flexibility services? And does it provide adequate instruction or detail of proposed interventions? And with that, I'll just go back to this slide here. So does this table provide enough information for yourselves? To understand what we're trying to achieve and what's coming up in the future. And the last one is uh, methodology. Uh, what do you want out of proposed methodology in the network development plan? And can variances in DNO approaches due to software and data availability be accommodated if well explained in the methodology? So if you're looking between different DNOs, do you think having a methodology document is or to having different software analysis tools and different data sets um, if adequately explained how we use them and how we implement them, does that give you enough visibility using the methodology documents? And then general, do you see any further opportunities for the detailed scope of the network development plan? So I'm happy to go back on any of these questions in particular, um, but if, if you want to go back to these individually and come back to me, I'm more than happy to do that and my email is at the end of this presentation. But other than that, I'll just open up the floor to a general Q&A session if you'd like to talk about anything in particular. We've just had a question come through from Neil. Where you use smart meter data to inform your report, what issues have you encountered in retrieving slash managing this data? Uh, it's quite an interesting question. Um, I suppose for us, um, Smart meter data hasn't reached a level of penetration yet where it can be used um, as effectively. Um, I'm not if that's something that we've experienced in our DNO. You know, I'm not sure is any clicker um, DNO you know, that's an outlier in that and, and is using it. But um, when we do have the data, we will use it um, quite effectively. But um, yeah, it's um, I think going by the level of penetration we have of smart meters nationally, I think it's going to be more likely that that will come into the fore in 2025. But we are looking at, um, I know as a DNO individually, we are looking at other methods of getting the that level of LV information with uh, other technologies. But um, no, it's, it's a very good question, but I think the, the answer is when we have the data, we will use it and we think it'll be very effective in outlining um, how consumers are changing their habits. Great, thanks for that, yeah. We just have another question from Peter. I have used the embedded capacity register and the long-term development statements for all the DNOs, and one of the main issues is the quality and accuracy of the data. Will data quality be addressed through the production of the network development plan? Okay. Um, 
Yeah, I can take your point that, yeah, from year to year, uh, things can change in, in various reports due to just, um, I suppose it's the nature of connections as they, you know, come on and also leave. There might be something that we have planned in that drops out of the plan. Um, but I think every year um, the level of data that we collect gets more accurate um, and the longer something or as something connects, we're, we're getting better at capturing those. Um, so I suppose the answer is uh, I would say that the, the quality of the data is getting more accurate every year as we you know, as we just um, get better doing it. And I think having uh, another, I think one thing that you will see is the fact that we have, we've looked at the network development plan and we said, well, the best thing to do would be rather than just have LTDS 0 to 5, then you have your, you know, network development report 5 to 10, and then you've got your DFES going from 0 to 2050. We've tried to you utilize all the information in the network heading report to make sure that you you have um, that continuity and visibility. So I think for everyone, the, the, the level of data is getting better. Thanks, Gareth. Peter, I hope that answered your question. Yeah, thanks for that. Appreciate it. Great. There are no more questions on the chat, Gareth. So, I'm, whether... I'm sorry. Um, I'm I'm really sorry to labour this. Um, I may be uh, missing something, but um, it's really useful to have the report link. But I am still a little confused about how to feed back individual. I think there was some mention of feeding back individually on via DNOs on draft uh, development uh, capacity capacity uh, reports. And, and I'm really not sure where to look for for those individual DNO capacity reports if they if they exist. I, I may have got the wrong end of the stick. That's fine. Um, I know that on our headroom report, um, let's just see if I have it here. Yes, um, I do believe that we have a feedback section on in this that signpost. Is, but that's that's all. I'm only I can only talk um, for EW individually. I think there might be something in there that signposts or gives a, a, an email where you can feed back on it. Um, that, that's fine. I will I will find that link, but but I'm still not clear. Should I be looking for separately published draft reports from individual DNOs? I, um, is this the is this the feedback on the form of statement or just the feedback on the capacity report itself? Uh, capacity reports, because I may have misheard you, but I thought you said that there were individual ones from DNOs. That yes. I look at. Yeah, I mean, each each DNO has published their own capacity report, um, and that and it, that's just um, something that we said we would do as part of the this product five in, in the past. Um, so I believe actually Reese has put a link to each yes. um, network capacity report from each DNO, um, which should help. Oh, yeah, we've, yeah. Super. Thank we've you all, so much. Thank you so much. That's fine. Um, but yeah, we've all published our own ones. And um, the, the beauty of actually having us all working on the same product was, was to have continuity. So they should all be in a similar format and they should all feel very familiar. It's going through each one. Well, yeah, um, thanks for that, Rita. Um, so. Yes, I hope that saves you some time, David. And thank you again, Rita, for sharing those links. I think that's it for the questions in the chat. So, Gareth, whether you wanted to uh, cover any of those specific questions, again, if anyone wanted to put their hand up to give their thoughts or feedback, or as we said, We'll be publishing these slides after the webinar and you're more than welcome to, to have a think and share your feedback after the webinar. That's fine. Well, thanks for that, Emily. Um, yeah, so let's we'll just go through the questions again and um, just to give a bit of a, a feedback on we have received um, you know, positive feedback on reporting up to 2050 so far from going with stakeholders. Um, are there advantages in reporting network capacity for multiple scenarios? Um, we haven't got major feedback on that, but we've taken kind of silence to mean yes um, on the, the last presentation. Um, people were quite happy with the annual update and felt that that made sense. Um, is there enough clarity and awareness? Another, I think from talking through the presentation, people were happy with there. there's enough clarity on how the different reports work together. Um, 
And the, the only one, and I was saying, quite see if anyone had any other ideas, was the Excel format, the tabular format for displaying this information. And um, we haven't received any feedback on that yet, but I think maybe it's because Excel is the best one at the moment. Um, does it propose reporting of larger scale interventions meet your requirements for long term visibility? Um, the feedback I've had so far is quite positive on that um, from a region development point of view. Is it clear how this part of the NDP fits within valid capacity or pitch? Yes. And does it provide adequate instruction? Um, so I think the table on the slide that I went back to previously, people were happy with the level of detail in that. But if anyone has any feedback on that, I'm more than happy to discuss it. Um, methodology. Um, I have, we haven't as a group received much feedback on this as of yet. But I think uh, on question two, the, the answer was a simple yes, if adequately explained then it's the different methods or software methods and data points should be fine. And then do you see any further opportunities for detailed scope of the network development plan? I ha we haven't as a group received any major feedback on that yet. So if you're thinking of anything over the next week, I'd be more than happy to, to hear your views on it. So um, with that, I think um, a bit of a shorter and sweet presentation, but um, that's that's everything from myself. Um, um, I have my my details are on this, and so is um, my uh, boss, Jilly Williamson. So if you have any feedback on that, or like to ask us any questions in particular, um, we'd be more than happy to you know yeah, go through that with you. And with that, I'll pass it back over to Emily. Thanks so much, Gareth. If there are any final questions, do feel free to raise your hand or pop it into the chat. And if not, as I said a couple of times, we'll be sharing this recording and the slides with all of the relevant links in the next day or so, should you wish to, to look over them. And what I'll actually do, Gareth, is the, the questions that you've asked, I'll pop them into um, a publicly available questionnaire um, with some predetermined answers, so that might help um, anyone give responses and, and give you some additional feedback. That's great, thank you very much for that. Lovely, okay. Well, it looks like there are no further questions. So thank you everyone for joining this afternoon and thank you to Gareth for presenting. And as always, do feel free to get in touch with, with Gareth or the Open Networks team if you've got any other questions. Thanks all. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, Carol. Thanks, Emily. Thanks very much. Thank you for the uh, clarification and uh, yeah, it's useful stuff. Thank you. No problem, David. I think that's